Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management and as a part of this, we are continuing ahead with 2.3 risk-based testing and other approaches for risk prioritization and effort allocation. As this is a very quite long topic, uh, we are still talking about the first section of this, that is 2.3.1 risk-based testing and this is the part four of this segment. As a part of this segment, we are going to elaborate more on the risk management in the life cycle. Of course, we do understand from the previous tutorials that what exactly is risk identification process, risk assessment process, and then risk mitigation. But that's not all. Of course, risk management plays a vital role equally, which is throughout the life cycle. That means, what do you mean by risk management? Of course, you have mitigated it already by uh, going through the risk mitigation. But don't forget, that's just the plan. Like you have planned for how you will overcome these kind of issues by writing more number of test cases. But when you start executing them, you do not really know that what exactly will be the side effects of that. What if exactly if identified risk happens? Are you well prepared for that? Or when you try to mitigate that risk, something else tears apart. And that's where you should be prepared for it. And how well do you handle that situation plays really a vital role in terms of making sure that you are not missing the deadlines. And at the same time, you are also curbing the problem and meeting the expectations of the customer and the application itself. So these are the things which you need to take care of throughout the life cycle, be it the beginning, be it the end, right from the test planning, you need to identify certain things and uh, make sure that you try to mitigate them and be prepared for something you know, like the risk which is identified, of course, you have planned for it, you have assisted, you have mitigated them by writing more number of test cases. But what about those risks which you could not identify? And of course, there are some of them which you could not identify and that will appear. So how well you are organized, how well you are experienced to handle such situations plays a vital role. And that's where we talk about a mature organization where people are well versed with what exactly risk is and how to handle it. And there are several risks they have seen there in their past experience and that adds a lot of value in order to give them a quick uh, preparation that how exactly you will handle such situations. So in a mature organization where risk awareness pervades the project team, risk management takes place at many levels. In fact, not only just testing, important te risks are not only addressed earlier in the particular test level, but also earlier test levels. That means like you may have a risk which might be associated with system testing and you have planned to uh, mitigate it by uh, early days of your system testing when it begins. But not only that, even if you want, you can mitigate such risk during integration testing, if it is visible, of course. If you experience any kind of science of that uh, that kind of risk which you have already uh, assessed and identified, then if you see them during integration, you don't really have to wait for system testing to uh, you know, address that. You can definitely start working on it or probably resolve that right at the integration itself. Even mature organization not only identify risk, but also the sources of the risk, which plays really a critical role here in terms of understanding and identifying and analyzing that what was the main reason behind it? Because we don't like risk, right? You know, even if it happens, you try to overcome that barrier, but that took a lot of your time. And in fact, a lot of your effort, which you could have applied in order to make something look good and blossom. So that's where we say that, you know, trying to get into the root cause of what exactly was the reason behind the risk and why exactly it happened, you can even prevent it in future. Or at least you will check all other part of the application where you predict such type of risk, which could be related to the same architecture, or probably could be related to the same code or related to the same requirement. So you can very well have your better outline defined there in order to organize things in much, much more efficient way. Further, the most risk-based testing methods also include techniques, uh, which uh, is used to, like the level of risk to sequence and prioritize the testing, thus ensuring early coverage of the most important areas and discovery of the most important de defects during the test execution. In some cases, all the highest risk tests are run before any lower risk test and tests are run in a strict risk order called as depth first. 
Now, what exactly this means that all of the highest risk tests are run before any lower risk tests. Now, assume that you got 10 requirements with you and uh, there are at least 10 test cases for each one of them like each requirement having 10 test cases and there are 10 requirements so put together you have 100 test cases and probably for each requirement you have prioritized your test cases based on the risk identification now assume that there are at least uh, three test cases in each type of requirement which are with the severity high or priority high now if you execute all different test cases with priority high from different requirements is what you call it as depth first that means you're giving more important importance to all the critical test cases no matter which different requirement they belong from but you're trying to execute them first so why would we do that because even if you run out of time or if we get stuck with something and then we could not continue or probably could not execute all our remaining test cases at least from all the requirements we have covered the critical ones right that's that that makes sense now in other cases a sampling approach is used to select a sample of tests across all the identified risk items using risk to weight the selection while at the same time ensuring coverage of ri every risk item at least once now this is where we say that and no matter which part of the uh, requirement you're talking about or which requirement you're talking about but if you see that probably uh, there are three test cases on risk one, which is of higher severity. There are five test cases on risk two, which is of medium severity. And there is another risk which is low and you have another few test cases for that. Now in breadth first means that you have executed at least one test from each of these risk items at the first. Okay, not probably going with everything from each requirement, no matter if it is higher severity. You try to pick up uh, each you know requirements one test case at least so you are actually touching each and every risk item from your old test pool and you're making sure that every risk item is at least covered once in the first cycle of execution and then you continue with the rest one why again of course at least each risk item is covered at least once and you know that whether something is going to happen or not and then you are prepared accordingly and if you see any kind of abrupt behaviors at any point of time you look after that in a more detailed way and then get into the deeper dive of such things to add more value now that's what is more important for us here at this point of time right so that's the two very unique techniques which generally organizations follows in order to make sure that uh, this is how they address the risk another thing whether whether risk-based testing proceeds uh, depth first or breadth first it is possible that the time allocated for testing might be consumed without all tests being run. Of course, we just understood that there is a possibility when you start running all these approaches, there might be possible that you got stuck with these executions and probably could not execute all your remaining test cases. So that time, this will add a lot of value in your effort. Also, when it comes to the test execution, the most sophisticated risk-based testing technique is which is not be the most format or heavyweight allow project participants, project and product managers, executives, senior managers, or project stakeholders to monitor and control the software development lifecycle, including making release decisions based on the residual level of risk. So from time to time, you keep measuring that how much you have already covered and what more is remaining in order to uh, mitigate and you keep planning your activities in terms of you know planning according to the residual number of risk and meeting the exit criteria at the same time so that's where we keep a track on that so management is just about managing the risk also making sure that how many risks we have already mitigated and what more is remaining well that's all from this particular episode team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning